I'm Rick Foster. Welcome to Rick Uncorked. If this is your first time to the channel, welcome. I hope you enjoy and I hope you learn something from each of our segments. And if this is your uh, second or third or you're returning to the channel, I want to thank you for your support and for subscribing and following me on the other social media platforms. Now, today, I have a unique wine. I wanted to give a little bit of the history about how it came about, and a little bit about some of the issues in California winemaking today. So many people aren't aware, but California wineries have been plagued with uh, several class action lawsuits recently of having arsenic in the soil. The soil is from runoffs from various, you know, previous farms, perhaps from fertilizers, from cattle farms, etc. This has created some problems within the soil. Now, the way that the California region of the wine growing is, the terrain is very hilly. It's got peaks and valleys and hillsides, so it's not just flat, complete ground. You have a lot of runoff from mountains, you have a lot of you know, overflows from, you know, rivers and creeks um, that tend to add to the wine growing. This is why, why the wine region of California is so unique. It's the fog that rolls in from the, from the coast that gets trapped into these valleys and ravines that blanket the area, that bring down the temperature so that the grapes aren't beaten by the intense sun of California. So this is one of the reasons why the California grapes do so well. Also, because of these ravines and the creeks and the runoff from the mountains, it creates a bit of a sandy soil. So it gives a lot of irrigation into that soil to allow those grape vines to really absorb the moisture, the water, and also not have to go in too deep. So it is able to utilize the natural irrigation um, as well as what's, you know, the water that's provided by the uh, grape growers. So as a result of some of this um, class action lawsuits and the high arsenic levels of some of the wineries, a lot of the wineries are now going to uh, organic or sustainability. Now, sustainability and organic is almost one and the same. The difference is, in that word, organic requires a lot more stringent um, permits, a lot more regulation, and a great deal of, you know, absolute organic. Whereas sustainability if you are a sustainable winery and not an organic winery, you aren't bound by the same costly permits and regulations. So you'll start seeing a lot of the wines of California saying they're sustainable or they're, you know, working towards a 100% sustainable winery. And you'll only see a couple that are actually saying they're purely organic. Now, this winery, is called Farmhouse. Now this is a, we're gonna have the Farmhouse Red uh, that we're gonna try today. They really only produce two wines, a red and a white. The board of directors is spearheaded by uh, Mr. Klein of Klein um, Vineyards or Cellars, Klein Cellars. And it's an organic farmer that got together and created this um, winery that is also a school. So students from around the world that want to learn about sustainable farming, organic farming, they will come and they'll apply and they will come and study uh, sustainable farming from this schoolhouse, which is called Green String Farms. And the produce or the product that they will end up producing from the school is the wine. So the wines are not organic but they're from sustainable, natural farming. And it's done in the traditional farm method. These are, it's aged for eight months in oak barrel, 40% new French oak, and the rest a variety of oak in the barrel. So it is natural. It's going to be made in the same old school tradition of a California wine. And I want to taste the difference of 
how this wine is made, if I can taste the difference between the, you know, sustainable qualities of, of the grape versus, you know, non. And I also wanted to try the wine because the winemaker, uh, Mr. Uh, Stagalotti, has been producing wines for gener three generations of Sonoma Valley. He knows a lot about wine. He was handpicked by Mr. Klein to spearhead this. Now this bottle sells for under $10 a bottle. It's a nonprofit organization. I'm not sure of the number of bottles that they produce each year. I'm sure that that varies a lot because it is a teaching winery. Well, let's give this a try and I'll let you know how it tastes. This is a blend and it's gonna have Zinfandel, Syrah, and a couple of other um, red varietals that are sourced all from this one farm in Petaluma. It's got a very plump, very taste, it smells like plums. Now that has a very plum forward flavor. It's got a lot of berries and plum. So I'm, I'm tasting, um, the tannins are, are light in this. I'm not tasting like a heavy tannins, which means that that eight months in the oak barreling, fermentation in the oak barreling has really brought down those natural tannins, smoothed them out to where I'm getting more of a tangy of the tannins. I'm not getting a dry hit of tannins in the back of my throat. I'm getting more of a tanginess from the tannins. I'm tasting the plum, I'm tasting berries. Possibly a hint, and I mean just barely a hint of the chocolate. Little bit of spice. So I'm getting, I'm tasting a little bit of that spice um, from that um, French oak. So I've got a little bit of that spice that's that's also blending nicely with that with the tannins. And that's all from the French oak fermentation. I'm hitting in the beginning with a real plum and then towards the middle a little bit of a berry flavor, a tad of a chocolate note but it's more from that French oak and that pepper. I'm, I'm, I'm tasting, and maybe, it's, maybe they've, they've done a lot with the Zippendale grape. Zippendale grape does put off a very nice black pepper tone or note to it when it's mixed or fermented in the oak barreling. So it's probably the Zippendale grape uh, that's been fermented in that oak barrel that I'm tasting that pepper, black pepper note from. So in all, it's actually a very nice wine because you can actually pick out all these different notes and tones in it. It is not as um, smooth as perhaps some of the, you know, more expensive wines or, or longer aged wines, but it's definitely a, a great wine for under $10 a bottle for you to try and really identify the different notes. And I like the smoothness and it's low in alcohol. Um, it doesn't have a lot of sugar in it. Um, and I would recommend this for a nice red blend table wine. Cheers.